Ladies and gentlemen, welcome today to another edition of a post race analysis video on the channel. We're going to talk all things that happened in this last weekend's NASCAR Cup Series race at the newly repaved, revamped Atlanta Motor Speedway. Super Speedway Racing almost at its finest. We'll talk about the racing product at the end, but first we have to go through everything that happened in detail throughout the course of the race. There's stages one and two, and then ultimately the up to the finish of the race as well. Like and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content as we'll get further into this video. Due to qualifying getting rained out, it was Chase Briscoe and Ryan Blaney on the front row for the start of this race. Briscoe was last week's winner at Phoenix. And as they led all the way back around through the first lap, it'd be Ryan Blaney by a nose edging out to lead lap number one. Throughout stage one, we saw a lot of two wide racing, not too much three wide racing in today's race. A couple accidents in the first stage, but nothing major for the most part. The major accident of stage one ended up actually happening late in the stage with just a couple laps to go when Denny Hamlin would slide up for second place in front of Austin Dillon while Kyle Busch was already pushing the three of Dillon. A checkup by the three caused him to get turned into the outside wall with the 18 getting collected, putting Kyle Busch back in the field and taking Austin Dillon out of the race. It would actually end up being William Byron who went on to win stage number one with Denny Hamlin finishing right behind him in second, Daniel Suarez third, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and fourth, Eric Jones. Jones rounding out the top five in the first stage. Sixth through tenth would be Kurt Busch, Alex Bowman, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Larson, and Christopher Bell. Throughout stage two, we saw some more good action on the racetrack. In fact, there was quite a bit of action in the second stage. I'd probably say more so than any other of the stages throughout the course of the race. There was a lot more chances where they were going two and three wide. I even saw four wide at one point for my seats in turns three and four back in the pack where there were a couple of cars that ended up actually getting into the wall, but luckily no wreck. The big one was inevitable at that point, and it was Tyler Reddick who would end up starting the big one. He had a tire go down off the exit of turn four in front of the field while running right around the fourth place position, second or third in line on the outside, causing melee off of turn four. A lot of cars got taken out of that one. Kyle Busch was finally uh, taken out of the race from there. He was one of the favorites considering he had been in the top five all throughout stage one leading up to his accident with Austin Dillon. He had come back to get inside the top ten before that had happened again and other drivers who were running up towards the front as well take it out. There were instances like that throughout the course of the day. Ross Chastain also had a tire go down while leading at one point in the race. And there was another incident where Ricky Stenhouse Jr. would also have a tire going down while he was leading the race. So tire issues were definitely a common factor in this race in the corners, causing a couple different accidents. But that was definitely the big one of the three incidences we saw with tire failures throughout the race on Sunday. A caution would end up happening at the end of stage two, just like in stage one, only this time it was Joe Gibbs Racing teammate Denny Hamlin making the push to the five of Kyle Larson, turning him off the exit of turn four, hard into the wall in a similar fashion, taking both the 11 and the five out of their chances of winning. Ryan Blaney would go on to win stage number two. Behind Ryan Blaney in stage two was actually Chase Elliott who had actually been involved in the accident, got a piece of that right side door taken off after the five had spun down into him. Luckily, it didn't create too much damage. He was still in the race and still in contention to win from that point on. Behind Chase Elliott in second was Chase Briscoe in third, Eric Almarola in fourth. Brad Keselowski would round out the top five in stage two. Daniel Suarez would pick up more stage points, finishing sixth. Martin Jerks Jr. seventh and eighth place through tenth was Bubba Wallace, William Byron, and Ross Chastain. And in the final stage, it was action-packed to say the least once again. But with a little bit of the field taken out up to this point, it was harder for runs to be created when they were going uh, three wide. They would quickly get dispatched, I guess you would say. And then the top four or five cars would kind of tend to pull out single file from that point on. We had some smaller crashes throughout the course of the final stage leading into the finish. One takeaway I will say from the beginning of the final stage though, Chase Elliott was battling side by side for the lead with Martin Tricks Jr. for a good almost 10 laps consecutively they were side by side for and the crowd was going absolutely wild. Of course Chase Elliott is NASCAR's most popular driver in the Cup Series and not only that but this is his home track so uh, him taking the lead felt as if it was Dale Jr. taking the lead at Daytona or Talladega 
big. At least I'd have to assume that that's what it was like. I, I'm kind of disappointed I didn't get any footage of any of that when it was going on because that place was super rowdy. Uh, I was almost wondering if Chase Elliott was going to win the race that day, what the crowd would have been like in the aftermath of it following the checkered flag. And uh, that didn't end up happening. In fact, we'll fast forward to the finish right now. The first restart in the final 20 laps of the race with about 19 laps to go would end up causing a little bit of a stack up this time on the inside lane where Eric Almirola would get turned in the center of the front stretch off the front bumper of Ross Chastain in the one. Almirola slid through the grass, was able to save it before creating any damage further to his race car and we would end up going green flag once again. Final restart would come with 13 laps to go in the race, setting up the longest green flag finish of a NASCAR Cup Series race this season as they would not have another yellow the rest of the day. Saw drivers like Bubba Wallace and William Byron leading in the final stretch. Wallace would actually get to the lead on the final restart, hold it for about three to five laps before William Byron was able to get back around him coming to eight laps to go. Byron would then be able to hold off the rest of the field as it was melee behind him from that point on. On the final lap of the race, it was Ross Chastain from third who would pull out of line on the front stretch, getting underneath the 23 of Bubba Wallace and sliding into second place. Wallace would get loose with a push from Ryan Blaney in the middle of turns one and two, sending the 12 car into the outside wall and backwards to a 17th place finish. Christopher Bell, with all the stacking up going on, would make his move to the bottom of the racetrack, eventually getting penalized for going below the double yellow line, but he would battle Ross Chastain enough that would hold the one car back. Too much side drafting going on behind the race leader William Byron as Byron would cross the checkered flag first with a victory his first of the season and third of his career as the rest of the field would crash behind him involving three drivers with heart impacts into the outside wall like Justin Haley, Chris Buescher, and Bubba Wallace. We'll now take a look at the finishing order, at least the top finishers in today's race, and we'll talk about the fantasy line of virtue of racing reference. William Byron again would go on to win. Ross Chastain with spinning and backing into the wall after a flat tire from the lead in stage two would still come back to finish second. We mentioned that he not only did that, but he also came back to score stage points in stage two as well. Kurt Busch had a quiet but solid day. He was in the top ten throughout and ended up finishing with a third place finish staying out of the carnage. Daniel Suarez as well for track house racing would end up finishing in the fourth position and Corey LaJoy with a surprise run finishing and rounding out the top five. He even went for a spin earlier in the race. Luckily had no damage from it. Chase Elliott had that chunk taken out of the right side of the race car. He was trying to get the inside line going in the closing last but nobody would want to go with him. He would end up still finishing in sixth. Chris Butcher would spin and back across the line in seventh place in that wreck coming to the checkered flag. Martin Truex Jr. would finish eighth. Joey Logano would finish ninth and Alex Bowman would round out the top ten. So as usual we go through the pre-race prediction see how that unfolded throughout the course of the race and then we'll talk about the fantasy lineup as well as far as my drivers that I talked about in the pre-race the must-haves were Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney Logano did get a top 10 finish so I was right on that prediction he didn't run there as much as I thought he would but he still ended up finishing ninth good run for Joey Logano despite only leading 12 laps in today's race he still ended up getting at least some laps led. Ryan Blaney, who did win stage two, still did not get a top 10 finish, so I guess I will say I was wrong in that aspect. He was also my pick to win the race. He led a lot of laps in this one uh, throughout, well, 15. There were a lot of drivers who led in this race, but still 15 laps led. Uh, he led a little bit to start that final stage as well. He was running third or fourth coming into that final restart and pretty much the final couple restarts. Stayed right around there. Had a shot to win late if things could have went his way, but it was the runs on the inside rather than the outside in the closing laps that cost it Blaney as well to stack up on the final lap which caused him to get into the outside wall unfortunately for Blaney and dropped him back to the 17th place run despite the fact he had been in the top 10 all day as well uh, as far as the sleeper picks, Chase Briscoe, Eric Almirola, I told you guys we're going to get top 10s, and they did not, unfortunately. At the end of stage two, they were running in the top five, running third and fourth. Uh, Almirola went for a spin while competing for the win on that second to last restart. Nothing that was his fault. He just got pushed in the wrong spot off of turn four from Ross Chastain, similar to what happened in the outside lane at the end of the stages 
one and two earlier in the race were bad pushes off the exit of turn four. Transition from that steep banking to the flatness of the front stretch caused a spin when the cars had gotten light. Uh, Almirola was able to save it, but still, unfortunately, took a 22nd place finish home. Chase Briscoe had actually spun throughout a couple accidents, still relatively kept the car clean. He led five laps, but unfortunately, a 15th place finish for him, and that dropped him back at the end as well. So 0 for 2 on the sleeper picks this week. And then on the don't have picks, the two drivers I said that you should not have in your lineups whatsoever. Martin Truex Jr. got a top 10. He's not good on super speedways, but I guess with this being a mile and a half slash super speedway, maybe a little bit better for him. He was able to lead a few laps throughout the course of the day. He got a top 10 finish with finishing 8, so I was wrong on that, but I was right on Denny Hamlin. That was my bold, bold prediction of the weekend. We know Hamlin's the best super speedway driver in NASCAR today, but I said not to put him in the lineup. He has not been great this year on both the intermediates and the super speedway at Daytona. He was noticeably off, and and although he was up towards the front at the end of stage one, ended up finishing second in that stage, and then towards the front at the end of stage two before getting into that accident, he ultimately caused the accident. Another mistake for the 11 of Hamlin this year. I think he sits outside the top 25 in points still after the first five races, so he is struggling, to say the least, to start the year. He struggled with his finish. He was not able to continue after the accident, so I was right with Denny Hamlin, not uh, finishing in the top 10. That was my bold prediction. He finished 29th and actually didn't even finish the race. He ended up DNFing out. And now with the fantasy team, here are the drivers I had in my lineup this weekend. Again, you can join on the NASCAR mobile app or website. Go to the fantasy section. Sign up with your email that is free to join and search for KRC League. KRC in all caps, capital L on League. And you have a chance to win two tickets to any NASCAR race if you're choosing the 2023 if you win the regular season or the playoff championship. As far as my team went, I stuck with my analysis of having both of my must-have drivers and both the sleeper drivers in my lineup up this weekend. Unfortunately, Logano was the only one of those that actually got a top 10 finish. Highest point total on my team this weekend was Chris Buescher and Ryan Blaney. Buescher because he got a top 10 run good there. Blaney mainly because he got a lot of stage points winning that second stage. Unfortunately, he did not finish too hot. Uh, Chase Briscoe scored a decent amount of stage points as well. Would have tied with them, uh, but he didn't get a great finish. Eric Alvarola again, stage points. So uh, kind of a mediocre team this week. Uh, nothing really to write home about. I did have Kyle Busch in my lineup at the start of the day. I was able to get into the garage. Believe it or not, I had internet connection at Atlanta this weekend. One of the few tracks I've been able to go to and actually have internet connection. So I was able to swap Kyle Busch out before the end of stage two. I think I had Busher in my garage, so I'm glad I was able to get the connection to do that. That saved me 26 points. As far as the bonus points on my fantasy team, uh, Elliot did outrun Hamlin, got that right. Blaney outran Larson, got that right. And I got Briscoe over Reddick. So pretty good on the bonus points this week. That really saved me quite a bit, scoring 30 there. But now enough talking about my team. Let's see how your guys' team stacked up at Atlanta. And here were the top scores at Atlanta this weekend. Inside Uranus, our season points leader, 201, wins another race this season. P. Shat Motorsports right behind him with a buck 94, War Given Racing, 193 and third. Uh, e. Stevens with 192, and then the Plow V3 rounds out the top five, 187. I was in seventh this week, 170. At least I got a top 10. That's better than most of the races this year. I guess I'll take it. Small improvements. You got to learn to crawl before you can walk. So trying to crawl out of the basement. Uh, after the start of my season. It's been pretty rough in fantasy so far this year, but I'm turning it around quickly. Now the overall standings, as mentioned, inside Uranus is still the points leader. These are official following Atlanta as of recording this a few days after the race. Now that I'm back home, the Plot V3 is sitting in second. Pretty big lead for inside Uranus. We didn't, I don't think, saw this big of a lead last year, though it is still early and that's a lot of it. Uh, still trying to figure out which drivers are going to likely be the major contenders for the championship this year. We'll know as we get a couple more races down the line. Having two super speedways early in the season probably shook up the points quite a bit as well. Uh, Sauce Mafia and Austin Dillon fans sitting in third with 881. Patrick Shadley or p -Shat Motorsports sitting at 865. And EC23, that's Ethan uh, down in the chat usually in the live streams. He is sitting at 858. I'm now in the top 10 in points. Thank goodness. I think that's the first time since the Daytona 500 have been in the top five in points this year. So maybe the super speedways are actually better for me than anything else this year. Uh, maybe that's not a good thing considering we only have a few more left in the regular season. But that is going to wrap up the fantasy side of this prediction, or I should say post-race analysis video. 
I'd like to thank you guys all for watching. Like and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content as always. And I will see you guys in the next video.